Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Hackensack City Hall. Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Ron Rudenborg. Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Here. Deputy Mayor Sim Councilman Battaglia. Here. And Mayor LeBrox. Here. Mm -hmm. The Open Public Meetings Act um, notice having been published according to law with a copy on file in the City Clerk's Office and a copy posted on the bulletin board in City Hall. Okay, would everybody please rise for the flag salute? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll move on to the agenda. Ted? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Tonight is the Tuesday, January 23rd, Cal meeting, Council of the Whole. First item for discussion is the ordinance amendment to Summit Avenue. Summit Avenue has a ordinance amendment for parking. And the issue of the parking is, is that, um, as you are aware, the police department has received numerous complaints from residents about parking on Summit Ave between Beach and Coolidge Place. The complaints essentially detail the fact that the length of Summit Ave is limited to two-hour parking only, except for areas between Beach and Central Ave. Due to these complaints, the police department is recommending Summit Ave Ordinance Number 170-10C at Summit Avenue between Essex Street and Anderson Street, and also Summit Ave between 170 through 71 East 3, Edit Summit Ave from Central Ave to Passaic Street to read Summit Ave from Thompson Ave to Anderson Street. Um, this would be applicable to street cleaning statues of 170-8. It would remain unchanged. That's the recommendation from the police department, and that's the recommendation for the ordinance amendment for Summit Avenue. Basically changes the two-hour parking being amended. Yeah. So, excuse me. So that means they're going to eliminate the parking on the right-hand side? I don't know that. All There's I know is what the ordinance. Parking, parking on both sides. I think all it's yeah. doing is making it consistent sure, that it's two-hour parking mm -hmm. only. Right. From from now from basically from Essex to Anderson. But right. my question was in the two statements. One says Essex to Anderson, and one says Thompson to Anderson. Is that because maybe there's no parking from Thompson to Essex? Leo, do you yeah, I, I mean, I can tell you because I've looked into this. Yeah, I mean, no I, do you have a copy of the memo Thompson. handy? Uh, I just I, looked inconsistent because they, they there there is some inconsistency in the way that the police department wrote the memo that I am trying to clarify. Because right well, like in, Thompson is the short street. That's right. Right before, like if you're going yeah, north. There's, there's no parking on as, as Summit a, from Thompson to Essex. And that's probably why. Then maybe they should both say they should just be consistent. Yeah. Right, right, right now, what, what, right now, there's this one little three to four block Understood. where there is no parking regulation. Right. Some of that there's actually no parking either side. Some of it there is two hour parking. So I, I'm trying to clarify exactly what they're asking for because the changes they're requesting kind of say one of the changes, the 17010C, deals with um, no parking at all. Um, and, uh, or no, sorry, one of them deals with no parking over two hours for anybody. The other is no parking over two hours for permit holders. So it would not make sense to make both of these changes because then you'd be limiting permit holders to two hours as well if you make the change in 17010. So that's why I've been in touch with the police department to I say- We still have to figure out. Yeah, we're still trying to figure out, but I, I think the intention would be that for residents, it would still be, if it was unlimited parking, we would leave it unlimited parking for residents and increase that one open area to a two hour parking zone unless you had the permit, essentially extending the permit area. But again, the way that they wrote it, there was some confusion because it looks like they're asking for two changes in different ordinances over the same road area. So that's why we have some inquiries in through the engineer um, and through my office to say, hey, exactly what are you asking for? But assuming the council's okay with it, you know, we would be able to have an ordinance for the next meeting. I would presume the intention is to not make this extra area that doesn't have any regulation at all, not two hour parking for all everyone, but increase the, the resident parking area or 
if the council would prefer to just make it a two hour, you know, whether you're a resident or not, you have to move your car. But obviously, I think right now with no regulation, I'm guessing residents are parking there much longer than two hours. To me, the problem in Summer Avenue is like uh, the people, they park in the right hand side, especially should be no parking from beach to excess, at least in the right hand side. And that way the traffic can flow. Most of these houses, now they've been owned by doctors or whatever, right? So the doctors or the nurses, whatever work for them, they park the cars outside there all day long, okay? So that's a problem. Sometimes you are coming in Summer Avenue and the traffic is all the way to Pasay Street. So where, where are their employees gonna park? Huh? Where are their employees gonna park? They're gonna end up selling their businesses well, they and moving got, out of they town. Got, they, they should be make the parking lot in the back of the house bigger. So that's a problem. Can, you how build, can you make it? How can you make it? They're, they're mad. But that's the ready. problem that that's the problem that we have right now. When we allow, when there was a one family house to have the uh, doctors uh, well, that's, business there, right? That's and now the over, all the people, zone. the employees and the and the, the people they're gonna go and get service from the doctor, they park and it's inconvenient. Every time it gets worse and worse and worse. Well, maybe do we understand? I would talk, if, if I would someone, talk to traffic. If someone doesn't live there. Like if it's a business, how many resident stickers do they get? Like are they getting unlimited resident stickers that they could let all their employees park there all day? Well, technically they're not residents. They're That's what I'm saying. Working. So here's what I think will bring some clarity to this. Especially at least, Ted, at least, at least three blocks, right three time. blocks before the exit street, no, they should be denied the parking in the right hand side. At least three blocks before the exit. Okay, so the next yeah, council meeting, this is an introduction, we it's can still... Insanity. Fix this before. Well, uh, yeah, I don't think it's introduced. We didn't put it up for this no, meeting. Not. It's not up because the police department has still not gotten back as to okay. what they want. So I'm going to contact the police department, double check this with John Jar, and I'll find out about residential parking if we're giving permits still to these locations because they're really not residential housing anymore. They're really quasi um, commercial space for so doctors. It's, a no, it's what's called an overlay zone. Overlay. And sometimes they, they are dry where they are empty, but until you see cars right in front of the house, all they're long. saving their driveways for the all clients, the and then they're parking the employees yeah. on the yeah. street. And maybe that's okay. I think we've got to wait and hear from the police department what they're, we don't really know by reading this what the real recommendation is. Okay. I think that's that, that's correct. Because some portion, like I said, some portion of Summit right now is two hour parking for everyone, no resident stickers available. Some of it is two hour parking for res, uh, unless you have a resident sticker. And then you do have this one little several block area where there's zero regulation where theoretically you can but leave your car there for two weeks. But at, that's least, what we're trying to correct. at least you will for the two hour parking, at least you alleviate the problem. But yeah. I know that there are people that they park more than four hours, easy. Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah. problem used to be that they would park there to take the bus into the city to go to work. That that's was another problem. problem. So that's why the two-hour thing came. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, just to give you a little history of what happened, because a lot of folks were complaining about that. People were parking to get on the bus and go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the beach and central, like the, the, the area between beach and central, I mean, it's not big. I mean, it's only a couple blocks. Right. But in that area, it's, you know, it's, it's free for all. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you, you know, someone could come in from... New York City and leave their car parked there all day long. Yeah. Because the people, the oh, sure. residents around that island, they don't want to complain because they can put the car in their driveway. Okay, we're good with this for now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, number two is the Environmental Commission Ordinance. Um, basically, uh, the Environmental Commission has been lapsed. And this is the um, basically restructuring of a environmental commission that the city has had in the in place. Myself, Councilman Battaglia, Deputy Mayor Sims interviewed uh, a whole host of people who um, put in for these different committees. And I have to tell you, honestly, mm -hmm. these were genuinely really good people who were really interested, some of them very young, they which got, was they very got, surprising. They, got the knowledge. they, they were um, what we would refer to as millenniums, and they were interested in the city and the commitment and how things were going, and I was really impressed um, with all the parties. So basically right now, the four that are being considered for the Environmental Commission were uh, Joseph Duncey, Jessica Parsick, um, her husband John, 
and Dr. Richard Lepinto, um, who is an environmental guy who has a uh, doctorate degree in this. So mm -hmm. um, these are all good people that I think would enhance our board and obviously help us to get reestablished. So I'm making that recommendation. I did uh, get some information uh, that was forwarded to me about Ruth N, who was from the Cultural Arts Board. Um, apparently she had served as a member, which is now defunct, and made some suggestion of naming it the Green Team and some other suggestions. I think her, she, she came over to visit me and, and went through a bunch of things. I think the main theme of her suggestion, and I think it might be a good one to roll into the Environmental Commission, is now that we are really doing a lot more, even with the Clean Communities and the Clean Communities Grant, right. she was just asking that even though that's not called out in the ordinance, you know, that we do things uh, such as, you know, uh, tie into the clean communities, do maybe more of the pickups, right. uh, better job, you know, more garbage, looking into garbage receptacles that aren't as ugly right. as some of them are, and, you know, tree, trying with the Shade Tree Commission. She just said if we're going to reinstitute that, would we consider tying those elements together and making that also part of their task in other words uh, okay you know keep Hackensack go green keep Hackensack clean like she was coming up right. with some little slow our, our new sanitation trucks are going to echo that sentiment yeah okay. so she did take a lot of time to compose her thoughts and I want to make sure that everyone you know heard it and and I think it probably does make sense because we've been doing a lot more since Greg got involved with the clean communities he's been doing a lot more Yep. You know, they've been getting a lot more done, a lot more accomplished, and we've been getting more grant money because of that, so we have. that's a good thing. It's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. You go out and work hard, they seem to reward us with more money to go work even harder. It works. <laughs> um, number three is Crossing Guard Post. Um, there was some conversation at one of the um, cow meetings, <clears throat> complaints about that the city had not had the appropriate or the correct number of crossing guards on post to make these uh, intersections and locations safe. Um, we involved the police department, the traffic bureau, John Jar, and the crossing guard uh, positioning will now be at Broadway and New Street to facilitate the increased usage of the entrance of the school there. Obviously, there's more pedestrians in the area of Broadway and Holt because of the school there. Um, we've already added uh, crossing guard at State and Passaic, um, and we're going back to look, which is um, my only question, how many students do we have crossing at Hudson and Munaki, which was the other concern that was brought up by, right. I think it, her name is Ruth? Ruth. Ruth. Um, who complained that we were not processing. I reached out to the BOE, and I have not heard or, or received information back, but I'll try again um, to find out how many students actually cross at this intersection. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, one child is, uh, would make the difference of whether we position somebody, but I just like some factual information because once you commit to these crossing guards posts, you're pretty much there for uh, many, many years. So I just want to make sure that we're investing our resources appropriately. I had a question on this, and Stephanie, you're probably more familiar because you drive there every day. When I read it, I thought it said it said some, it said school buses need to use their flashing lights, and I think that is critical. That you know they have their flashing lights, so it's going to eliminate a lot of the problems with people just driving while they're they're parked, they're picking up. But then they were saying not to let parents use Holt Street for pick up and drop off, make them use South Main or Broadway intersections. Now, where do they park now when they pick up and drop off? Parents? Yeah. All over, all over. So wow. they're right. I was there today. It yeah. was crazy. Yeah, I, that I was actually going to ask if is it the crossing guard's responsibility to also move traffic along? No. Okay, because no. that's Cro going on. Crossing guards' absolute function is just what it says: crossing the okay. street. They're not traffic control officers. This is why I am now very much um, requested the police department yes. to send <laughs> officers that are on these districts in patrol in these sections be on post when these people are brought to school and dropped off and, and, and um, when they're departed at the end of the day because um, I've seen some photographs uh, on people's phones that have taken of just 
people double parked and triple it's, parked it's and kids mayhem. serpentine so, between cars. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a recipe insanity. of disaster. Fairmont Parker, yeah. too. Fairmont? Parker is just as bad. Parker. But, 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 yeah. but sticking with this one, maybe we need to take a better look at this. I mean, if Holt Street is the problem because of the buses, maybe the buses should pick up behind the school on the other side. Um, that was explored, and I forget the reason why that, that was not possible, but I will follow up on that. Yeah. I mean, I think that... We know right now there's a lot of congestion there because we've got construction no, they're, they're, going they're, they're, on, and that whole street right. is one, only going to get worse. So one thing, once the once the building's built, the, that parking lot's open. Those buses should pull into the parking lot, mm -hmm. drop the children off mm -hmm. in the parking lot. Right. And that eliminates that whole situation. Right. Now they only cross the, right. the street. No, they, they they have to park in the same way they park now. The only thing is the parents. Why? They Why can't can't they pull into the because lot? Because this is the no, this is the building, the buses they park right now here. The problem that was before it. That sometimes the, the buses, by the time the kids they get in the bus, they got the red lights on. And they can have the yellow light because the kids, the only thing they do from the building, they go right into the bus. And no reason why the guy got the red lights on. You can't, you, the red light has to has be to on while the children are loading in and out. Well, the that's, that's, but that's the recommendation of the cap now. They say the moment, but at some time they got the red light, even nobody's on it. Right. So when they're when they're turning the corner from Broadway to Holt, they some of them have their red lights on there. So now you have all a back, Broadway back, back, backed up. And nobody's on the bus. Them in the, what's the parking it's, lot? It's, no, it's the where they really no. need to be is where the, their parking is, because that's right on top of the school. They don't have to, kids don't have to cross the street. Okay. You know where they have those nine spots? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really where the buses should be. I don't think be. they can make they that don't turn. There. They couldn't fit there. They're not going to. Now the other thing is, at <clears> least for now, because let's face it. The eminent building, by the time they really going to use that parking lot, the construction company is going to be at least another 40 days. Easy. So what the reason right now, at least we give to these people at least half of the parking lot. This is where the construction is going to be. This is the parking lot. Why we don't do this, right, and allow all these parents or teachers to park in the way, take some of the congestion away. the two brothers. Right. The other thing that, that came up today, there was a conference call with Steve, myself. We had a meeting with the DEP, and we're still on the Bohemi. Oh, the lot behind Bohemi. Mm -hmm. and, and that appears that if we can get some... Uh, the teacher, they should be over there and walk one block and right. allow the other people, they come to pick it up the kid to park around that area. And that, between the space that we can get in the parking lot of the M&M building, then the other parking lot behind the Bohemia, right, that the teacher, they can put the car there, then the congestion is going to disappear. Right. So um, we're working with um, Mr. Kleiman to uh, pursue this. We, Like I said, we had a meeting with the DEP today. Yeah. It went very well. They gave us some ammunition that we need to pursue this legally. Hopefully, Steve... You can move forward. You may end up having to have a... You know, there may, there may be a court filing necessary right. on this, but... Uh, as long as the, the, the state and the DEP are backing us up, I think we've got some powerful friends. Mm -hmm. So once that commences, then we would pick up probably 20 to 25 parking spots at that site, Maybe which would more. which would certainly supply enough, I would hope, the parking for the teachers, at least get them moved out of the way, and then we'll see what the long-term solution is. have to make sure that the board of is on board and going to do this. That's mm -hmm. the key. They have, they're the ones that have to have the teachers park there. Oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. But I think in the meantime, the police have to be there because the crossing guard where she is now is a big spot where parents are double parked and you have her trying to cross kids and they're parked right in front of her and she can't see. I knew. Yeah, it's a bad, bad area. Right. And the police should just ticket, you know, whoever's doing it, ticket them because, right. you know, some parents are doing the right thing and driving around, driving around looking for spots and other ones are just right. pulling up and double parked. Okay. Um, the next is number four, which is the um, loss of Tony Sedita. Um, we have a uh, position on the Shade Tree Board, and we asked Fred Cole to fill that position, and he has accepted that. So the mayor and council will have to approve adding him to the board, but I think Fred will do a good job. And I think um, with his occupation and, and the functions that he performed for the city, um, I don't know if he'll be a 100% replacement for Tony Sedita, but he's certainly a good start. So. I make that recommendation. Uh, number five is the re uh, removal of the parking meters on Atlantic Street. Um, this comes, like everything else, with uh, a few issues. 
um, with the back and forth of what the city is just trying to accomplish. But basically, we asked Sergeant O'Connor from our traffic bureau to weigh in on the removal of parking meters on Atlantic Street. And he wrote the um, Captain Aquillo uh, his response. And basically, um, it brings in the traffic bureau's opinion is uh, his opinion that allowing parking on Atlantic Street in the area would only bring liability to the city of Hackensack. Allowing vehicles to park in a traffic lane may contribute to possible accidents. Atlantic Street is frequently used as a direct route for ambulances headed to and from Hackensack University Medical Center emergency room. These larger vehicles need extra room to pass freely. So the thought is, is to remove the parking meters at Atlantic Street basically in that zone, yeah. and then we're going to have another um, discussion on the other end of Atlantic Street and how that's going to be pursued. Yeah, because the, the, the proposed ordinance, I think, is only for, you know, basically a couple block right. area. It's only about five or six meters. It's five not a lot. It's, it was part of the plan for the uh, for the park and mm -hmm. for the Cultural Arts Center. Right. My, my, my concern is, I, I don't disagree with that. Don't get me wrong. But as soon as you cross State Street, going west, it's actually narrower than Atlantic Street with the cars parked there. Because there's parking on, on both sides of, down there. And so you're- You're funneling but, it anyway. For one block, it's wide. And all the way to the hospital, it's it's narrow as can be. So I, I you know, I, I really don't understand the concern for five spots, but, but what happened, 50 spots on the but way- what happened is in Atlantic, to the hospital. in Atlantic Street, when you are driving Atlantic Street around that area before Railroad Avenue, you know that it's a narrow street and it's a car in front of you, you're going to be right behind. in no choice. Here, if two cars coming, and when you get to that spot, like, let's see, I part the van just on, on purpose. And then this guy continued, this guy had to put the brakes and then go into the left lane. It's another car coming from behind, bingo. But Atlantic Street coming <clears throat> north from the hospital, at that intersection, there's only one lane. It only becomes two for five for for, for the length of mm -hmm. Atlantic Street from State Street to Warren Street, from where or Main Street. Only from State to Main is it two. The rest of the way, it's one lane. Right. With parking on both sides. Yeah, but it's a, it's a condition. You picture two people driving, shh, and when they get to the the car that is part there, they have to stop. Yeah, but there shouldn't be two people pulling in there. It really should have been made one lane. When they well, did, that's, that's, a, the that's a different ball that's game. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because it's made two lanes. It either has, right. If it's going to have parking, it has to be made one lane, or if it's two lanes, you uh, can't have the parking. The way it is right now, it's safe to remove that parking space and not allow to well, park. Well, we're not park. desperate for the parking now, but in the future, yeah, I think but we have other, to well, one of the things we could, the, the other we could hood those parking sections and make them prohibited temporarily no. and not change the ordinance but, and then just sort this out later. The other problem, yeah, but the other problem that you have is people, they cross round around that area, they cross mm -hmm. from the park right. right to the parking lot. And if you got a car parked there, and you're gonna pass in front of that car, the car that's gonna come the left side can take you anytime. You're gonna- It's better that you have- You're a, gonna have an issue with parking or with crossing there all the time. Yeah. And one thing that I, I did think forward. about that wasn't mentioned in the memo, because of the new utilization of the H-PAC, mm -hmm the Atlantic Street Park, and the um, lower level, gallery. the gallery, when you do have an event, you may have some options. If you leave that for parking, you have no options because it will be parked. Um, because we either have to move a fire truck in or we have to move a tow truck in. Well, or that, for our Friday night events, those that street was packed every time. Would right. So there's a little yeah, part of me that says, Maybe not having parking meters might be a godsend until um, we can but figure we out can, what the we new problem is. shouldn't allow parking then. No parking. Right. No, that was you my take point. Them. Because the other thing that that does when you don't have cars parked there, you're going to have the attraction. You're going to have kids milling in and out, cutting through there. You, you want as clear sight distance as you possibly can, so people can see this and obviously see Atlantic Street Park and the functions that go on there also. So there's a little part of me that says. I think I'd eliminate the parking and just leave it. But to me, if we're going to fix this, we should fix the whole area. I mean, that the people that are parking for free on State Street because we don't have, have those meters. Issue. 
right, right by you know Meridian there on that corner, State what? and Warren. That whole street has parking without parking right. meters. And the reason why that it has not been reset the meters is is because the stalls that were painted on it were originally done for one direction, and now we have to change them. So as soon as we get them changed, we're going to reset the parking meters and make this. So basically, um, they figured out that they're going to provide space so somebody can pull into the middle section and the two end ones come in from one end to the other so you're not blocking trying to mm -hmm. um, parallel park. So it would make that elimination so you're not blocking that because now that State Street is two-way, when you come down to Atlantic, unless you're in the left lane to make the turn onto Atlantic, you, you got to cut over because that now becomes a single line through there. Right. So it is... It is um, a little different than what obviously. Right, but you're seeing ways. all the renters, the Meridian folks are all part right, of the free. The That's what I've got to and think then about. and then Warren Street too. We remove some of those meters during construction of the, of the cultural and, they, and they're gonna go back. That all has to go back too, because yes. people are just parking for free in that whole section there. So would the council like to table this for now? Would you like to have these meters? Well I would I would take the meters out for now, but I think we need to address it based on the demand for parking. Possibly okay. in, in a traffic study, you're like I said, you're. you're I mean, it's, it's easy to take. Uh, it's it. Look, to, to to put if we take the meters out now by ordinance, you can bring them back in. You know, about two meetings, so plus ten days. So you know, you'd, you'd have fifty days to bring them back. The part if you I don't understand necessary. is, you know, you're coming from a very narrow street, right, and then you have a short distance of. This two blocks, and, and we wouldn't even if they didn't make that two lanes, we wouldn't even be having a discussion. But that's the issue, John. We if they take lanes. the two lanes away, right. then you can keep your parking. That's the problem. And and even after the parking, though, that's where it goes to two lanes, where you can go and eventually you're going to be able to go right or left onto Main Street, right, or straight, right. So you still get into two lanes. Mm -hmm. no even if those way. meters were there, you're breaking into two lanes right. down by Main Street. So Something why don't we, we take at. them out, but let's make sure that people don't say, yippee, now we can park here for free and still park there. So, so they don't buy that right now. Yeah, you yeah. put up no parking well, the, the, park the, or, the ordinance, I drafted this ordinance. Uh, I don't think we have it on the agenda because I think they wanted to talk to you first. But, right. um, you know, the ordinance would put this as a no parking, no parking. zone. So right. it would actually, the ordinance changes right. from a metered zone to a no parking zone. That's so right. it would not be a, right. you know, free for all. It would specifically be no parking. They would be able to put up signs and, and all of that. Right. And if you're good with that, that ordinance is already in the it's clerk's on, office. On oh, is it? Is it already on? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know we actually put it, so. Pull it. Well, then there's we'll no need. We'll, 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 we'll do it, we'll do it. We'll do it. Get rid of it. Yeah. That's okay. food trucks mm. Yeah. It's only one that twice a year. Oh, yeah, there you go. South side of Atlantic. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there you go. Um, number six is the um, 2018 Risk Management Consultant Agreement with the Otterstead Insurance Agency, which is our risk manager. This just has to be pro approved by resolution. This is um, our insurance um, facilitator. We've used the same firm. Um, I make this recommendation. This is just a procedural thing that needs to be approved. And number seven is the issue of handicap parking. I forwarded an email to the council um, of all which are 45 since Christmas, 40, 45. of wow. all of the either expired or fraudulent handicap parking stickers that, that the Hackensack Police Department has picked up, which um, goes to the credit of them and shameful on the people that are still I'm using this when they really don't need it and we have the physically impaired um, trying to find in or have uh, Egress or ingress to to shopping or whatever facility that they need. How much are they fine? I don't know. It's two hundred fifty dollars. I think it's two hundred fifty. It's been a while since I've issued that summons, but can um, we contact the the gentleman who was here? Um, handi he was that handicapped gentleman um, who spoke out on this. Overlook. Right. He lives over on Overlook. 
mm -hmm. and just let him know because that's quite an accomplishment. Yep. Butcher would be happy uh, hearing that. He, he definitely sang the praises of the Hackensack Police Department for their efforts. Um, the other thing that came up here is I also have a request from a gentleman who wants us to entertain reserved handicap parking spaces for residents basically only. So basically, the oh, person's he, handicap. That's what he wanted. What he wanted. He wanted. Same guy, probably. What's his name? Do you remember? Um, I have it downstairs. Um, I didn't bring it up with me. But it sits on my desk. But in either case. That's a tough one. The, the problem with that is the minute we make that offer like a private parking. it's private parking for him and now anybody else that's handicapped can't use the placard and i explained to this gentleman in pretty <coughs> detail that um well other towns do and i said well that may that may be true sir but here in the city of hackensack where parking is a premium and we have a lot of movement of residents and and people coming to the city and people that are physically challenged and handicapped to isolate them because you're the only one that can use that parking. Well, you know, I, I said, I'm not trying to debate that there isn't a need for it. And I understand that you personally are, are have that condition and I understand it, but you're not 24 seven here. And the minute you pull away, anybody that wants to use that can't because now we're in a conflict that we basically have reserved handicap parking. I mean, it is, I, I mean, I will tell you some municipalities, it is not, it does happen. I mean, I have seen towns where it will say, you know, a handicapped parking spot reserved for license plate number, you know, QXC123. Um, and, yeah, a lot of times those parking spots, you don't see anybody in them all day long, but it is a reserved parking. Generally, when that's done, it has to be, you know, somewhat extraordinary circumstances. So they'll, they'll have a committee or something, you know, with, you know where... Uh, you know exactly you have to you have to try and figure out how to do it it, it becomes very tricky um where they have to demonstrate it's not you know it's some exceptional circumstance but it's pretty rare i'm just saying i've seen it done it does have some considerable challenges to do it about fairness well, his, you know his about situation is because he has a van and you know he right. needs the ramp yeah. that space that the handicap spot allows to get out so we can't even use a regular spot even yeah. Available because you know it's not configured for him to get out. Right. So that's that's his issue in his case, and I understand that. You know, I I, I agree. I don't think we can designate individual spots. But I did promise spot. him that I would bring it before the mayor and council. I would get him a response, and I would respond back to him. So um, I'll, I'll take that as a. Yeah, but what about? I mean, <laughs> that's on the street. But what about? And the building itself. And the building itself is his. Maybe we could work something out somehow with them. I don't know. Somebody go out, he go in. I mean, if there's a building, building's supposed to have a certain number of handicapped parking he lives, spots. He lives in one of the high rises. Right? Right. Yeah, they are supposed to, you know, have, have, have X number of, of handicapped parking if they've got uh, a parking garage. Um, you know, again, whether it's big enough to suit an individual's particular needs. Unfortunately, the city has some buildings that have no parking on them. And way back when, when it was allowed, they right. had street parking. So, uh, and we've had a couple of those complaints in here where they came in and said, oh, you got to change this. You didn't have any when you started. All of a sudden, it's not the city's responsibility to, to grow some for you in the interim. It's not that we had the parking available. We do have municipal lots. You can certainly buy reserved parking spots and, 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 and get it. I mean, I hate to be that person at times, but unfortunately, sometimes I just can't assist everyone with their needs because um, you know we're, we're taking a, a, an old city here and, and, and making it apply to 2018 and it's going to come with some bumps and curves in it that we just can't address. Right. If that is all that we have, this would be the end of the city manager's report for tonight. Hey, with that, I'd like a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. Second. Coco. Councilwoman von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. And Mayor Labrosse? Aye. Anybody from the public who'd like to speak? Please come forward. Seeing no one from the public, motion to close to the public. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Maybe a little bit there, clear. <laughs> the, um, you know, motion to go into closed session, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. And the duty cases. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Mayor Labras? Aye. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to discuss certain actions under section 7B7 and 7B8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, which pertains to matters falling within attorney client privilege, ongoing litigation, and personnel matters concerning the employment of a current or prospective public employee. Whereas the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack is in the opinion that such circumstances may presently exist. And whereas the mayor and council wish to discuss the following issues, personnel matters, ongoing litigation, matters involving attorney-client attorney privilege, matters involving the purchase, lease, or acquisition of real property, and any pending or anticipated litigation or contract negotiations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the city of Hackensack deem it necessary to exclude the public from this discussion. The outcome of the discussion will be disclosed within 90 days or at such a time as the interests of the city do not require confidentiality. Okay. We'll see everybody at uh, 8 o'clock. Steve. Oh, Steve. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any specific litigation to discuss. If something comes up in closed session, I'll announce it after. Okay. Thank you. See everybody at 8. Oh, we need a motion to. We need a motion to uh, come out of closed session, please. I'll offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Mayor Labras? Aye. Now I need a motion to close the uh, council in the hall. Um, and before you do that, I just, for my, my typical announcement, we did end up talking about a couple of litigation matters, so I will announce that we did talk about uh, Zisa versus Hackensack. We also did talk about a matter, uh, Nunnermacher versus Hackensack. I will note for the record, that that matter involves the Hackensack University Medical Center as a party, and uh, the mayor excused himself for that part of the discussion. Okay. Motion. Need the motion? Yeah. Motion to uh, close the council hall. Awesome. Sir. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino? Aye. Deputy Mayor Sims is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Now we need a roll call.